you, Elijah. Well, joining us now to discuss the confusion, frustration, and anger, former federal prosecutor and mayoral candidate, Thru Vignaraja. Thru, thanks again for coming in. Of course. Good morning. Uh, okay, your part of this is because some of those business owners actually reached out to you at one point to say, what should we do? Um, where, where, are, where are you with that? How do you title yourself with this group from Fells Point? Yeah, I'm an advocate and an organizer. I'm a friend of the community. They reached out to me because, frankly, nobody else was listening, and we're trying to do our best to get elected officials to actually do their job. Yeah, so you do advise them saying, okay, what you're doing is great. So then we, next thing you know, we get a meeting from the mayor set up. I mean, here's his tweet just the other night saying, hope to see you is the bottom line right there as he's talking about this uh, virtual town hall coming up, but then he doesn't show up. What does that mean? You know, honestly, I think people arrived there confused. There were 700 residents and business owners that showed up for a mayor's town hall, and there was no mayor. Uh, this was an opportunity for a young mayor, an inexperienced manager, to prove that he could handle a crisis, that he could lead in a moment when the residents and the businesses needed them to step up. And then he passed on that responsibility to some of his deputies and junior staffers. It was just bizarre, and as you said it, confusing and then frustrating and now is a source of real anger for them. Yeah, no, a lot of people looking at the mayor saying, okay, hey, look at this, we got his attention. That also sparked some anger from other communities too, saying, wait a minute now, we've been dealing with open drug sales throughout here for years, for decades, violence and, and businesses being shut down, and yet we're not getting the attention that Phil's point is, why is that? And they even suggested possibility of race issue here. Look, I think that's a legitimate concern that other neighborhoods are not getting the attention they deserve. They've been shouting at the top of their lungs as well. But the answer is to not give no one any attention. It's to give every community the attention that they deserve. And that's just not what happened here. There was no indication that the mayor, frankly, even read the, the letter. The two solutions were more police and road closures. If you read this carefully laid out two-page letter, nowhere do they, do they ask for more police and road closures. They do ask for some very specific things and none of those were delivered. It's just confusing. Yeah, well, it's confusing, but then through, then you say, okay, well, these 40 plus business owners are going, okay, town hall. That means I'm going to actually get to talk to my leaders here. That didn't necessarily happen either. So what were some of these business owners' response afterwards when they said, wait, that was it, it's hour long and we didn't get to really ask any questions? I, I mean, literally my mouth is open. I think that's how they reacted. They went in there hoping this was a, a real defining moment. They had done something unprecedented because they wanted to try to raise an alarm in a way that would actually get people's attention. Suddenly you had sobriety checkpoints, you had a town hall, they thought, wow, this is a moment of hope. And the worst possible scenario is that the mayor scheduled this planning on coming mm -hmm. and then decided not to because he was afraid of the reaction. That's not leadership. People need to step up. This is an opportunity for city leaders to actually lead and it's just not happening. All right, so then let's get a little bit more into the, what the, the demands are from these business owners, those four, quest, those four things they want addressed here. Um, when we start talking about that, is, is this like, do you think that police are afraid of policing in that area? Because we saw photos of people standing on squad cars, taking pictures, and an officer leaning up against the same squad car that those, they, they were on. Do you think they're afraid to push the policing efforts in that area or even across the city? Look, the business owners made very specific requests. Number one, pick up the trash. Number two, stop asking, stop allowing people to sell alcohol and drugs in front of our establishments from coolers to 13 year olds. Uh, number three, make sure you actually enforce the traffic and parking laws. This is traffic citations, parking citations. We're not asking for mass arrest or zero tolerance or any of that stuff. They're just asking for basic order, basic enforcement. And I don't know if the cops don't feel empowered to do it. I don't know if they've been told to not do it. But there's no communication between the left hand and the right hand. And last night's town hall where the individuals and residents couldn't speak, the mayor didn't show up, and the plan reflected none of the demands that the community actually made is gonna read, I think, only to more frustration, more confusion, and more anger. Yeah, more anger. So is anybody happy after what happened last night in the town hall? There were 700 residents, and the, commun the community comments were so bad that they cut off the comments. Then people started writing messages on their phone and holding the phone up, and they started shutting off people's cameras. It was the opposite of a town hall. It was yeah. an embarrassment. What's next then? I mean, what does this say for the leadership here in Baltimore City? What, what's, what's next for the mayor? I think the mayor has to realize that this isn't going away, and the fact that it happened in one neighborhood and got really national attention was a wake-up call for a young mayor. Uh, he shouldn't say, oh, well, there's problems all across the city, so I can't 
focus on Fells Point. He should address Fells Point and Cherry Hill. He should address the violence in Park Heights as well as the open air drug dealing on North Avenue, the trash not being picked up in Matthew Henson and Harlem Park. These problems are everywhere. The business owners said over and over again, we're standing up on behalf of communities all across the city. We've had enough. We've heard this from residents and neighbors and businesses all across the city. This isn't just about Fells Point, but here's a chance for you to show some leadership in one community. Instead, he said, this is a local issue. I'm sure the local leaders can deal with it. And the abdication of responsibility to say, it's either people below me's responsibility or it's the governor and president's fault is a very bizarre way to actually show leadership. And I, you know, we all want the mayor to succeed. We're rooting for him. Right. I, I hate to be critical, but I think people are really, really fed up. So what needs to happen this weekend then? Like, if, you were, if you were in the mayoral position right here, what would you do coming up to this weekend? I mean, I would first of all read the letter because the letter spells it out. I would make sure that there's enough people to pick up the trash. I'd make sure that there's enough people out there giving tra traffic citations to cars that are double parked. I'd make sure that we had enough folks out there that if somebody is walking around selling alcohol and drugs to juveniles, that they actually are issued civil citations, that the alcohol is poured out, that there's some basic enforcement. We're not asking you to lock up every person on the corner, but whatever happens in every other large crowd in America that prevents this from happening, that doesn't result in mass arrests, that's what needs to happen this weekend. Okay. And the mayor just needs to start by reading the letter. Through Vignaja, thank you. We appreciate it.